Peloton has updated its bike and I managed to get my hands on one. I've been using this for the last couple of days in my home and I'm going to show you all the new features. Just to be clear, this is not a review. I've only had it for a few days, but a full review will be coming in the next 30 days. So this video will focus on the new screen, auto follow and the Apple Watch integration via Gymkit. I'll also cover some of the minor design changes to show you what's different. So don't forget to subscribe and also hit the bell button to be notified when that video comes out. I just want to add, I bought this bike myself, so it's not a Peloton promotion or paid for them in any way. This is like most of the reviews I do on this channel, as I prefer to keep things this way, as it helps me keep independent and without any influence from any brand. If you're thinking about buying one of these and this video helps you out, there's a referral code in the description below, which will give you $100 off accessories and helps this channel out at no extra cost to you. So first of all, let's just cover some of the minor changes with the design. There's new lettering for the logo, which is different from the previous model. It has different adjustment knobs with a better texture around them. And this is compared to the lever types, which was sometimes hard to put into position. It has a quick release for the saddle and a new digital resistance knob, which I'll talk later on in the video. Its handlebars are also different, which allows for the screen to rotate, but you still cannot adjust them backwards and forward. It also features a new power adapter, which is USB-C, and some people will welcome this. All the cables have been hidden inside of the frame, which gives it a better look in my view. There's no ethernet around the back of the screen and the micro USB has been replaced with a USB-C. The headphone jack has been placed into the handlebars rather than at the side of the screen. This will make it easier for inserting wired headphones. The volume buttons are also down the side of the screen. Now I'm not going to go through all the different prices for the different ones. If you've come to this video, you've already done your research and you're just simply finding out about the new features. So let's now get into the main differences, the new screen, auto follow and the Apple Watch integration. So starting with the screen, it's a 24 inch and it's a lot bigger than the 22. I know it's only two inches, but those two inches make a lot of difference. While it's useful seeing more detail, it, more importantly, it really helps when you're doing workouts off the bike. The screen rotates all the way around in both directions, along with facing away from a bike. Again, this is useful to give flexibility in smaller spaces, so you then can then position it how you need it. It can also be rotated upwards and slightly downwards, and this is useful for floor-based exercises such as yoga or co-training on a mat. I also like the fact the screen is bigger for someone that wears glasses, but not for workouts. This is useful as it gives you a better view of the screen. It features four channel audio with two front facing and two rear facing speakers. These speakers offer better sound and more immersive experience. There would be little point me trying to demonstrate the sound as it were playing via your speakers and you really do need to experience it yourself in order to get the best benefit. The camera also has a physical slider to switch it on and off. Overall, the screen is a big improvement and the ability to rotate it and have different angles really opens up the possibility of using this as an all round workout machine. I also like the fact it's bigger and you can appreciate this when using it. Plus the improved sound, which gives a more immersive experience and it feels it's really in your face, really helps that out. Now, if you do have any more questions, you can leave it in the comment section below and I will get back to you. Now, moving on to the auto follow resistance. But let's first look at the digital knob. It is light and easier to turn to the previous version. And this is because it's not mechanical anymore. It's easier to turn and turns are registered using sensors that are built inside the knob. This sends signals to the bike to change the resistance and it's quick to react. First, I just want to point out, auto follow is not available in live classes and it does take several hours for the feature to be added to the class within on demand. You can see which classes have got the auto resistance by looking into the class data and looking for target resistance data point found in the workout description. If it does have this, then it supports the auto follow feature. As you can see, looking through classes for only a few hours ago, this feature is not available in some of those classes and the target resistance data is not available. The auto follow is easy to turn on and off and I found it useful in classes to keep me on a target and just ride. When you turn on the auto follow, it plots resistance in the middle of the target range, which if you want to, you can adjust using the digital knob and you can also override it using the knob again if you want to change your resistance yourself. It also has an Andy countdown to show you when the next resistance change is gonna take place. So having the ability to be able to alter it using the digital knob, especially through the ranges, is really useful. And also the ability to deactivate it using that knob is also a welcome thing. 
Now it's worth mentioning this feature does not work with scenic or free rides. So when you've turned on auto follow, you can still turn it up and down. So you can turn it to the maximum in the target range or the lowest point. So it's similar to putting on autopilot, but it also gives you some flexibility to be able to adjust it if you want to do that. Now, if you do have any more questions on this feature, please leave it in the comment section below and I will get back to you. Now, moving on to Apple Watch and Gym Kit. You can now pair the Apple Watch via Gym Kit and it will transmit data between the bike and the watch and vice versa. In terms of the watch, the data you will get is distance, power, cadence, calories transferred from the bike that is saved in the Apple Watch, fitness app and health kit. In terms of the bike, the watch will send HR data to the bike and that will help with calorie calculations. Now, whilst it's good that the Apple Watch will pass the HR data from the wrist, as with any wrist-based exercise such as cycling, I would always recommend, and I do this in all my reviews, using a chest strap. So the biggest call out is that you compare a chest strap to the Apple Watch if it's compatible with Bluetooth, and the data will be sent to the bike, which is useful. It's also worth mentioning that you need to check in settings, workout, and ensure that gym detect equipment is turned on. This will ensure that everything will work when you come to sync the bike and the Apple Watch. So to get started, you start by opening up a workout and then putting your watch near the camera, which has the NFC chip built in, and then it will prompt you on the Apple Watch and then everything is synced and ready to go. Once everything is connected, the heart rate data is displayed on the screen from the watch and then data like distance and calories and everything else is displayed on the Apple Watch. Now, one thing that's worth noting, it only works for cycling activities. So if you choose to do another exercise type, the option is not available to sync with Apple Watch. This is because Gymkit sees the bike as an exercise bike and that's how Gymkit works. So I'm not sure how Peloton can overcome this given that the framework is built a certain way. So I just wanted to point out that if you was thinking about using this for any activities using the screen, then the Apple Watch integration does not work with non-cycling activities. When using Apple Watch and Gym Kit, any activity started means that it will save in the Apple Elf app, but it'll also save in the Peloton app. So you have it recorded in both. So anyone that is worried about not keeping Peloton friends updated with workouts, then you're absolutely fine. So when you finish the workout, the Apple Watch automatically saves and it gives you a summary of the distance, calories, average power, average cadence, and overall HR. If you look in the Apple Fitness app, you also get the same data along with an HR graph, and you also can dig a little bit deeper into this data within the HealthKit app. But if you do have any more questions about Apple Watch and HealthKit, then leave it in the comment section below, and I will get back to you. So overall, I'm impressed with the last couple of days, and I really enjoyed using the new features. Of course, it's still early days, to tell if the bike is worth the extra 525 pound compared to the standard model. Although Apple Watch integration is great, it would have been nice if it had been available for other workout types. While this may not be a Peloton issue alone, it would be nice if it told its customers on its marketing and sales pages as the Apple Watch integration could be a selling point for some and it could leave people disappointed if they're expecting this as a feature. As ultimately, if it could be made possible, this would be great for floor-based workouts, certainly to pause an activity. I'm also confused why auto follow is not available in live classes. After all, the instructor will know what the target is as they create the class and it could be easily loaded server-side and then delivered to the user's machines. So given this is unique selling point of this bike, hopefully they will dress this down the line or at least speed up the updates to on-demand classes. I would also like to see the auto follow feature added to scenic rides in the future. I will continue using the bike for the next month and of course I will publish a full review. So don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified when that video has come out. So thank you for watching. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Also, if you have any questions or comments, then leave it in the comment section below. Don't forget to check out the description for anything that's mentioned in this video. And also don't forget to use the referral code. If you choose to buy one of these, it will help you out and it will also help this channel out at no extra cost to you. Thank you very much. I'll speak to you soon.